What did we think of the first four episodes of Three Body Problem? How does it compare to the books? And what was the best Game of Thrones cameo in the first four episodes? We'll answer those questions and much, much more on this Body, Body, Body podcast. On Three Body Problem, the new series on Netflix. My name's Bubba, and with me, as almost always, is someone who needs a cheat guide for every VR game he plays. No! It's Catfish. Catfish, we're back. This is incredible. Oh, my God. We've been gone so long, I forgot how we even do this. This is how you amass followers. By being away for eight months and have them really itching for you to come back. And then yeah. doing a podcast on half of a show, which all the episodes have aired right. on. They've already binged. <laughs> but that said, we are only going to be breaking down the first half of this first season of okay. Three Body Problem. Got it. And we're going to be giving you our thoughts. We're going to be playing some science quizzes and riddles oh, that will give you a chance to answer. And we're going to get to some of your feedback, which is always the best part of our podcast. Catfish, we've talked too long. What are your thoughts, your rating, your review of these first four episodes? Well, Bubba, yeah. I have got two different ratings because I'm scared Whoa. that I may have, have, have stolen your thunder. Mm -hmm. So my, I'm going to give it nine, either what I like to call double Fs. That, wait, double Fs? Yeah, F to fellows. We're all we're all F'd when these people show up. Yeah, or nine triple S's. Triple S's? Yes, yeah, silly, screwed, sapiens. It's kind of the same thing. It was just great. I mean, we have got we have got some some mysteries here, but you know, I did send you an article that talked about why this was so good and and, mm -hmm. and I sent it to you because I thought it was a great great thing. It was off of the AV club and they said essentially the reason why this show is so good is that everyone's willing to accept anything. We don't need it like in a in a horror movie where it takes 45 minutes for other people to agree that yet yeah, there's a ghost or there's a bad <laughs> You're crazy. Yeah. Everyone accepts it. Yeah, I'm seeing numbers behind my eyes. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with you uh, psychologically. That's absolutely happening. And that really helps us get into the show. Again, there's, you know, even past these first four episodes, we have gotten to a place where I never got to in the books. Oh, my God. It's not that science is crazy or 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 not uh, uh, fitting with our theories for over the years, although that is true. That's not the real problem. The real problem is people are coming to wipe us off the planet so they can have it. Yeah, let's just be honest. These yeah. these evil aliens, these mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these Santi, they are recording the best episode of Punked ever. <laughs> oh, you, you thought science worked like that? Punked. Mm -hmm. Ouch. So you're nine out of 10 catfish. I am just a bit below you. I'm going to give this eight double S's out of 10. Oh, double uh, screwed sapiens. No, 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 no. When it's only a double S it's of course, suicidal scientists. <laughs> it's like this, <laughs> this stuff doesn't work. Uh, I've gone to lens crafters and I'm still seeing things in my eyes to hell with it. Commit suicide. Eight out of 10. To me, the big thing through four episodes, but I knew it after the first episode. And to me, what is the thing? This is about as good an adaptation of this first book, this novel, as I think anyone could make. Just so listeners know, I've watched, I want to say, 12 to 15 of those episodes of the Chinese adaptation of this oh, novel. Oh, God, I'm so where sorry it's, for you. Oh, my God, it's 30 episodes for one book. You know, yes, it's, it's more detailed, but boy, does it lose momentum. Does it not have any kind of narrative drive for a lot of these 30 episodes? And so I really think, I know listeners, you may disagree, but I really think you've got to give it up to these three showrunners, David Benioff, D.B. Weiss, Dan Weiss, as he likes to call himself, and of course, Alexander Wu, who we know because we covered the second season of The Terror, which is one of the shows that Alexander Wu's worked on. I think these three guys have done as best as they can. I completely agree. I, I, again, we see a lot of shows where it's kind of a, a, a mystery box, yep. and e even even as we covered uh, Silo and you talked about a lot, it was like, 
they hid things from us that were clearly shown early in the books and they hid yep. them just to have a, so they could have a bunch of surprises at the end. You thought that wasn't necessary. I, I thought it was still fine. But here, this could have been really, they could have really played with us for a while. And again, I said from the part of the book I read, the 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 real mystery, which they don't seem to care too much about here, no. is why are all these scientists killing themselves? So this is uh, great. Uh, also, in the first four episodes, you know, even though they're giving away the game, there is a great oh moment. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, very much so. We'll talk about that in a bit. I mean, we've hey, how about there's a big, uh, you know, there are a couple of moments that could be catfish. Are you talking about the double S moment? I am Sayonara Samwell. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That that's funny. That's not even the moment that no, it isn't. Uh, it I'm isn't. thinking about. I am thinking about when our boy, Mr. Rich, <laughs> sitting on the boat, was like, "Don't worry. When when the aliens come, little girl, everything's going to be fine." And uh, then he ends up uh, realizing there's a real disconnect between him and the aliens, and uh, they don't uh, like lying. Now I think. That's somewhat belied by the fact that the first time that they are interacted with, the person says, uh, everyone here is 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 horrible. Please do not contact us again. <laughs> so I think, yeah. you know, that he is being fooled by the woman, the woman who's in charge of this whole thing, because oh, somehow man. he thinks this is going to be great. And, of course, we know her original reason for contacting the aliens was, Yes, please come and burn it all down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to all that. To me, okay, great. Uh, uh, listeners, before we get into more deep, and you can see we, we want to talk about this series so much, we love to say, who cares what we think? We want to know what you think. I okay, know have it. that when the reviews came out, the, the professional critical reviews, it was generally positive, but even the people who were positive would have some kind of hesitation on it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've seen some people who really love these books who haven't been thrilled with this Netflix adaptation. So we want to know what you think. If you are listening to this podcast, please write to us on all the social medias you can find us on. You can find at Double PHQ on Twitter, on Facebook, on Threads. You can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave us a comment. If you are, mm -hmm. are really afraid of all the social media that the Santee are monitoring, you can email us, old school, hello. Oh, sure, they're not monitoring that either. No, no, no. They're like, yeah, that, that, that's not that's advanced. Safe, and I don't know whether it's safe is, is that uh, you agree to meet them out in the open somewhere. And then right. they can give you their feedback. Right. They'll say, <laughs> enough of Goldilocks <laughs> to hell with you. So if you want to meet with us secretly, we have uh, uh, Bubba and I have yes. uh, have very intentionally uh, put ourselves on a different coasts uh, so that wherever there are plenty you are, of open fields reaches. where we can meet. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Bubba's on the east coast. I'm on the west coast. You can get to us. But remember, if don't take a plane because you'll be on a list. And if you're driving. Make sure you take enough cash out so that you can regas and right. and 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 buy things uh, without a credit card trail. Yeah, turn off your low jack. Everything we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to be sure that Santee can't get track us too much. But catfish, you know, we said we want to hear from our listeners. Listeners, please let us know. But let's just get right to it. This is a world publishing phenomenon. This book was this trilogy of books was, and let's just get right to it. Tell everybody where you come to this series per the book. Okay, well, this is a great shame of mine. I love science fiction books. I've read science fiction books uh, since I was a child. Still do. I tried to read the first book about four times. I think I got to between uh, page 80 and 100 uh, four times different times i was well, able to explain to ms catfish what was going on up to that point i said ask me any questions you have now because shortly i will have <laughs> no background <laughs> of what's going on wow i did also though bubba i'm i was yeah i i'm first of all i just have to let you know that i am completely impressed that you watched that many episodes 
of the uh, Chinese version, which Amazon, smartly or not smartly, uh, got the rights to about two months ago. And it wow. was quiet. I just kind of had to find it. And I mm -hmm. watched the first episode, which was around 45 minutes to an hour long. And I thought, I cannot do this. I can I cannot keep doing this. And, and Bubba, it turns out in China, they showed this 30 nights in a row. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they get to some of the reveals that this show gets into episode two after, I think, about 22 hours. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like what it took this version, the Netflix version, two hours to get to. It took about 22 hours to get through in the adaptation. So, hey. I, I did finish that first book. I've only read the first book, but I did read okay. the first book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads, but in some ways that's for the big ideas. This book, and I believe this series, is great about big ideas, about ooh, concepts and that kind of stuff. The actual reading of it I thought was difficult. And why? I think, Catfish, you get it to it right on the head. It's not that things aren't happening. There are scientists committing suicide. Why are they doing this? This is kind of a big deal. But in the book, our protagonist, and let's be honest, even on the show, you don't really feel like any of the people that we're reading and growing to care about are close to suicide, being suicidal. So it's not like you have a fear that, oh, no, other scientists are, are committing suicide. Is one of our, is our scientists in the book going to commit suicide? You don't really fear that. There's also this kind of big international conspiracy like you see in the show where there's kind of pro, pro this side and pro that side. But because you don't really know what the stakes of this big kind of these two sides fighting in the book, right. it's still like, well, what's at stake? And then I love this. My favorite part of the book is the flashbacks to China, the Cultural Revolution and the, the story up through the 70s. I thought it was fascinating, but it is not until hundreds of pages in when you get to the kind of reveal of what in the world's going on. And that, to me, was the best part of the book. I loved it in the show. It's the do not answer sign. It's the, oh, no, this young woman, and I, I'm going to mispronounce it through entirely, so I apologize, everybody. This young woman, Yi Wenji, has had such a terrible life. Her father's been killed by these counter-revolutionaries. Her, her mom betrayed her father. She gets sent to to you know work this forestry plan, this deforestation plan. And to be honest, the book has more betrayals, human betrayals of her in, in doing things honorable. And then she mm -hmm. has this great moment, you know, where she talks to this uh, this young person, this Mike Evans, who's talking about, listen, I'm trying to save this bird and look what they've done to this forest. You know, it really does get to the point where I understand it, you know, where it is really, you know, like to hell with this place. Yes, I'm going to answer the do not answer thing. And in the book, I love that moment. I think it's very good in the show. What this adaptation, this Netflix adaptation did, which I think is is smart, is they rush to it. They rush to tell you what's going on. They rush to tell you the stakes. There's still a million other mysteries. You really don't know what the VR game is really until episode three, you know? So there, there are some mysteries. They want the listeners to know the stakes. And I think that was great. Now that meant they had to rush through that stuff in, you know, the cultural revolution in 70s China, which, and they had to cut some of those scenes that I love from the book out. But I think it was just so smart to get to it. Get, let everybody know, okay, this is, this is really the issue we're going through. And once again, I give it eight out of 10. I think I think they've done a great job. The betrayal you're talking about is in the book, uh, the guy who gives her uh, Silent Spring, yep. uh, it's not just that the book's found and he doesn't admit he's the one who gave it to her. Mm -hmm. He kind of rats her out. Yes. It's, yes. it's, it's I mean, really disturbing. It sets up a scenario where... You read that message from the from the Santee in the books. A lot of times they're referred to as the Trisolarans, and you're like, "Oh my God!" They're telling you, if you if you respond, we're going to know exactly where you are in the galaxy, and we're going to come and invade and take over. And and this character has been through so much crap that once again, you have to understand. You understand it. You you, you don't want her to do it. You know. You know. You're like, please, please, do not respond. Do not answer. Yet she does it. I think it's great. I, again, it, they had to rush to get to it, but I, I think that I think that made the show have a pulse that it really it, needed. I don't know if it happens in the book, but interacting with the uh, young woman who ended up uh, dealing the death blow to her father, and that that yes. woman is completely yes, no. not repentant at all. Oh. I think that's enough to make her go. 
yeah, forget this. No, that is that is from the book, too. I mean, it's just horrific, horrific, horrific. So we love this adaptation. Again, listeners, if you have any thoughts, any disagreements, please, at Double PHQ on all social media, we want to hear from you. Now, we talked about, hey, we've already answered two of our questions at the top. Catfish, let's get to it. This show is being framed, even though this uh, producer, Alexander Wu, didn't work on Game of Thrones. He worked on many shows, including, as we mentioned, The Terror Season 2. Because this has such a Game of Thrones tie into it from these uh, showrunners, we're seeing people from Game of Thrones outside of Westeros. So let's hear it. The and, best Game of Thrones cameo. And they are not. And we're, the reason why we call, of course, we have Samuel Tarley, who. Uh, oh, yeah. We uh, originally thought w- was going to be in the whole uh, season, but no. they did uh, one smart thing. They figured if we're going to bump him off, we're going to make this guy as unlikable as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and they made him a jerk in this. So, yeah. but he had a bigger part, but all kinds of actors are coming in, well-known actors, having very small parts, which as we know are called cameos. Yeah. My favorite. The Bless best you. Game of Thrones cameo from the first first four episode okay, is let's our it. boy Tycho Nestoris, also known as Mark Gaddis, also Man. known as Mycroft Holmes. He's been many yes. things, but he provided one of the and I and at first I was wrote few, but I think I'm my answer is only moment <laughs> of levity in the first four episodes when he was in the player in the vr game this is great the first time Mm -hmm. anybody in the vr game actually meets other people that were like oh these people are not part of the game they're other online players and we can tell they're other online players because they're complete jerks (laughs) and just like any mmorpg that is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game the jerks end up just giving you a hard time. So yeah. my favorite moment is when Tycho Nestoris, mm-hmm. who is like, I'm Isaac Newton, and he and he gives our players the double bird. He play, he says, I created, and then he gives them the double bird calculus. Mm-hmm. And then his buddy who is playing Alan Turing calls them trolls. So that was oh. my that was my favorite Game of Thrones cameo. Someone, I don't know, either by mistake or on purpose decided, yes, we'll let this one moment of levity go on. Well they once again they know online behavior. Yeah, these people were being all reasonable. They were like, let's yep. save all these people. And then we just got these guys who are jerks. And that is great. So Bubba, what but what was your Best Game of Thrones cameo in well, these first four episodes. as far as best, as far as moment in the show, mine cannot top yours. But there is so much going on. There's so much you have to get your head wrapped around on this show. I watched the episode, and only later did somebody say, you know how in that one part of the game they actually saw the Pope, His Holiness? It was Varys. It was the actor Conleth Hill. Oh. We, we've seen with hair when we covered the show Magpie Murders. He's in yeah. it as he's in Three Body Problem as the Pope. I didn't even recognize him. I was like, who's this guy? Oh, oh, that's who it is. All right. I yeah, That's funny that because you, you are so much better at this than I am. But I immediately recognized him from his voice. I was, but I was he too was in it for such a sh- short period of time. It was short. It's amazing. It was short. You know, these guys, these guys are probably like, well, me, you know, maybe not Mark Gaddis. He's been in a lot. But this Game of Thrones made Conless Hill career. So I'm yep. sure if they were like, can you come in and play this two second thing? He's like, I'm absolutely pleased. I'm on the play now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we keep mentioning we, we're. We're so excited. We're just talking with such passion, but we are only talking about the first four episodes. We've both only seen the first four episodes. A week from now, we're going to be back with our thoughts on the whole first season. And if it keeps up like this, you know, you're going to hear more raving from us about this great work that they've created for Netflix. If you are one of these fans who've been with us for so long, know that we have been on a bit of a break. But in June of 2024, tell me. Avalanche is coming, and Avalanche is coming. We're, we have our Parsec Passion podcast where we talk about Star Wars TV shows. And at the beginning of June, on June 4th, it's going to be the Acolyte, the new, from a Sith, Dark Jedi point of view show. We're very oh, man, excited about There's going to be a that. lot of heroes on that show. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're going to eat it. On in the middle of June, I believe it's June sixteenth. We're going to have uh-huh. season two of House of the Dragon. If you like playing the match game with us, you get ready. It's going to be absolutely crazy with Team Black and Team Green match game. We're going to be covering House of the Dragon season two on our podcast, the Joffrey podcast. And then, as if the month of June couldn't destroy us already, <laughs> couldn't destroy your podcast apps of choice. We're going to uh-huh. be continuing our possibly, probably, I'm definitely only podcast in the world, in English, covering the great German show Babylon Berlin as we talk about season four. So in June, you're watch your podcast apps. You're going to get an avalanche from us. Bubba, that sounds like, that sounds like too many podcasts for it us is. to do. I'm it wondering is. if somehow we can... Combine those podcasts. Oh, that'd be good. Into like House of the Babylon (laughs) Acolyte. How's that? (laughs) Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. They're going to be right. Right. So we'll say we'll refer to to either the Sith or the Dragon or the Nazi. (laughs) That'll be the games we play. Is it a Sith? We'll be like those brown shirt acolytes. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Hey, this show, Three Body Problem, let's get back to it. It is a show about science. It's talking about real world science phenomenon, about radio waves, about uh, uh, the three body problem itself, about a, a, a thing in the orbit of three suns. So I thought, because I know that Catfish is such a scientist, I thought I would oh, present no. some oh, science boy. riddles to Catfish. Oh, We're going to have boy. three of these through the podcast. Listeners, please feel free to play along. And see if you can solve these science riddles. Here's riddle number one. Oh, God. Ready? This is, Bubba, I just want to say this. It has yeah. been eight months since you have been able to shame me on a podcast. And I, I feel like you're trying to make up for it. I am all trying to show how smart our listeners are by them solving these science riddles. Okay, so mm-hmm. here's riddle number one. Okay, let's hear it. I make up three fourths of the universe, but most of what I am is a mystery. I make up three-fourths of the universe, but most of what I am is a mystery. Do you know the answer to this science riddle, Catfish? I have two answers, one scientific and one not. My first answer is, is it microplastics? (laughs) Oh, that's the funny one. That's pretty good. No. Okay, my other answer is, uh, I'm just going to say Oort Cloud. No. Listeners, I'm going to give the answers at the end of the podcast. I'm going to read it to you one more time. I make up three-fourths of the universe, but most of what I am is a mystery. All right. So, hey, see if you can uh, solve that. Catfish, why don't we talk about the characters, and we're going to kind of group them together, and we want to hear your thoughts about your favorite one of these groups and maybe ones that you didn't get that engaged with. I believe kind of what you would call the protagonists of this show are the Oxford Five, these five friends who went to school at Oxford together. There's Augie, who sees Casey Kasem's countdown in her vision. <laughs> we have Jin, who, you know, gets very attached to the VR game she's playing and she wants to save an AI kid. We have Saul, who kind of doesn't do much of anything good. Come on, Saul. Let's let's uh, let's have well, some. Uh, I mean, basically, he pines after Augie, and then when yeah. she finally needs him and he finally answers, he's not alone. Awkward. And, this, and Augie not happy about it. I don't know why, because she seems like she's telling him the whole time. Listen, there's nothing between us but friendship. Right. I just need you to answer the phone, and he answers the phone and tells her he's going to come over, and she's like, "Is that someone else there?" I- Awkward. I don't, I don't, yeah. All right. But there's and also the, Jack, mm-hmm. R.I.P. Jack of Jack Snacks. Jack Snacks got cracked and he ain't coming back. Oh, also. Yeah. I think the most impressive thing about Jack. Yeah. Is that he has the largest drum set in the entire oh, that world. That was pretty good. Right in his living room, too. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I was like, it's just like 20 drums. It Hell feels yeah. like you'd need you'd need some sort of cantilevered automatic chair to get you to all those drums. Neil Pert is looking at that going, jealous. Yeah, that's a Rush joke for everybody who listens to Rush. <laughs> and there's also Will, who, like Princess Kate, has cancer. So those are the Oxford Five catfish. Uh, which ones did you uh, uh, like the best, connect with the best? Were there any... Uh, you know, I kind of already hinted that I think Saul doesn't have too much to do in these first four. What are your thoughts about the Oxford Five? 
I, you know, I have a little bit of a problem. First of all, I was happy that Jack uh, bit it. Uh, not only was a jerk, but just real stupid to be like, yeah, no, I can't. Oh, yeah. No, that aliens, that's smart. a bridge too far. Oh, and also, Lord. it seems like he would go along with that. So yes. It didn't make, any, it didn't make much sense to me. Um, to be to react so strongly to it. Yeah. And, yeah. Hmm. Augie, I kind of, if my only problem with this show is Augie as the main protagonist, and maybe mm-hmm. she is not, to me... I'm much more on. I'm much more Team Jin. I am a hundred percent with you. You know, Augie had this trauma of seeing these numbers and having to shut down her life's work. You would think that would be a deep connection to her, but for whatever reason, I, I did connect more with Jin as well as like the person trying to solve this this three body problem of the game. I connected with her much more. Yeah, and you know, now that I think about it, I think as the episodes went on, it was more Jin, mm-hmm. uh, at least, you know, because she, she's the one who um, we see infiltrating. Yes. And, and again, remembering the part of the book that I did, this organization, as you said, was a little bit more mysterious, and we didn't think of them as the enemy when our... At first, um, no. Definitely... Right not a uh, female in the book protagonist to <laughs> join this group. And so I, yeah, I, I get along with her a lot. Uh, I, I like her. Uh, w- Will, I'm not quite sure where they're going to place him in this unless he gets, uh, unless the aliens are like, Let, let's fix his cancer before we um, kill everyone else. Just for fun. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I, I think Jin is, is the true kind of, heartbeat of the show at least yeah. through these first four okay so we have other teams other groups of characters i'm going to call this the pro take over the earth crowd <laughs> once again we you have... blah, 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 or, or i mean you know it, it it's you always show a bias uh <laughs> when you na- label things pro or anti so if you when you say pro takeover crowd it sounds like you're in favor of it you could also say anti-human life crowd right if you wanted to come down on a different How about f these kids crowd <laughs> <laughs> so once again we have uh, th- what i would call the main character of this team this now older woman in the present timeline yi wen ji who we see her go through all the trauma uh, of her life. We have Mike Evans, who we also see in the past and see in the present, where he's, you know, he's communicating with the with the aliens constantly, kind of, you know, telling them bedtime stories. And then we have Tatiana, who who is just like, please don't TMZ me. I'm not going to be on any videotape. Who is uh, almost like the muscle of this uh, takeover crowd. Any thoughts on these groups of characters, Catfish? Well, what's I thought fascinating, and and again, you know, we decided to do half and half. But at this point here, right on in episode four, is when we realize Ye has kind of taken advantage of Mike, and maybe not given him the full scoop on. Uh, <laughs> what she thinks the alien's intent is. And so I thought that was fascinating. And the it was Jonathan Price's reaction to uh, the aliens not appreciating lying. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought I, that was beautiful. Of this crew, I, I think this is really the fascinating crew. I mentioned how in the books, the Wong Shi's character is the one that that I was struck by as like, oh my goodness. And then to see her here, you're exactly right. She is the power person. Now, Mike talks to the aliens seemingly on his boat every night. And he, he calls them, you know, he has a different relationship almost with them, calling them Lord, you know, like they are like a religious figure to him. But but to her, it doesn't feel that way to me. Sorry. I thought that she had called them uh, our Lord. Every, everyone refers to him as, as our Lord. You know, he should have known, Mike, that when you start calling someone my Lord, that puts you in, uh, uh, <laughs> by definition, a lower position. Oh, yeah. And and also, they don't, you know, uh, 
people who are the Lord don't really uh, care too much about the the followers are, are definitely a much lower species than the Lord. I, I do want to give a shout out to the actress mm -hmm. who plays Tatiana. This is an actress, Marlo Kelly, who appeared, re, who was really great on this old USA show called Dare Me. She is just the purpose, perfectly, excuse me, a representation of a extremist, of a zealot, of somebody who will do anything for the cause, who really wants to, you know, yes, we're being invaded by the, by the police, by the, these uh, forces, but I, I, I'm more hurt by what Jin did, and I want to shoot Jin. I thought uh, this actress, Marlo Kelly, as Tatiana, I thought she's a great presence. She, well, she's, you know, a badass. She is badass, and the question is, maybe moving forward, is how much does she know or any right. of the followers, is it only Ye that knows they're coming here to just blast us the F off the planet? And, and it's kind of surprising that Mike didn't know uh, what was going on there because his whole thing was essentially we're ruining the planet. Right. So it makes sense that that we would want someone to remove the people ruining the planet, which is basically all of humanity. <laughs> so we'll, I'm curious to see how this goes moving forward. Mm -hmm. Also, the thing that was played out here, I thought very well, was the idea that, you know, Ye kind of says it in, 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 in what sounds like an insane fashion, that whatever's happening here is what they've decided to happen. But it does seem true that the aliens could have stopped any of this, and they're allowing this part of, of the things to happen. Right. So we'll have no. to see why they did that. Okay, so it does feel like a big some sort of official group trying to fight the takeover crowd. And mm -hmm. I call them the, you know, the, the forces of humans, I guess the pro human team. And that is, we have Dashi Benedict Wong who smokes and learns things. And then we have uh, Thomas Wade, AKA Davos who likes power. It re you know, we see maybe a couple other people like Dashi has a, uh, uh, somebody investigating with him, but really it feels like, we got two people fighting the good fight for humanity. What's going on here, guys? Well, you're forgetting Dashi's son, who's like, someday, Dad, I'm going to prove everything to you. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we should put him on which team? The bro? <laughs> he's on the he's on the pro, pro smart, but also pro lazy team, okay, according to right. his own dad. How about this? Do you feel good through four episodes about our chances if this is the team fighting for us? Well, I mean, it really does set up that, like, they're allowed to do as much as the aliens allow them to do. But I do like that we know what, what's going on here. And I do like that we have a team that seems to have their stuff together. They, oh, yeah. You, you know what I mean? They, this is not just like you know, people with sticks fighting people with guns. It's people with pistols fighting people with bazookas. So at least we've got a chance. Okay, and then the final group uh, mm -hmm. we want to talk about is what I would call the VR world, the VR team. We've got Sofan, who will cut off your head if you don't have an invite. You know, if your name's not at the door, your head's on the floor. Then we have Little Girl Follower. We have the Count of the West, who seems to be helping Jin through her version of the game. And, of course, we have the Pope and other players. Anybody on VR world, in the three-body world, who you especially like? I mean, the kid seems really nice until she's like, she really lays on the the guilt. It's like we're trying <laughs> our best over here. Now, what is sort of the mystery here to me when we sure. talk about these three groups and the, the VR game mm -hmm. is if these aliens are so all-powerful, what are, why are they trying to enlist the scientists to be on their side? And I think it might have something to do with like, hey, stop learning, stop advancing your society. Maybe they are worried that if scientists uh, don't keep killing themselves and, and don't stop these things, that we whole will have advanced as a society enough by the time they get here scientifically that we can fight against them. Now, that has not been sort of explained, but that would be my guess so far. 
that is a very good guess. What I wonder, and because I've read the books and see, know more of what's going to happen past episode four, I guess all I feel safe in saying is that to me, it really did feel like they wanted somebody to maybe solve the problem of their world. If their world really is, you know, trapped by these forces of the these three suns, it felt like they were looking to the scientists. Can anybody save this? Can anybody save this? And then at the end of the game, at least, you know, kind of where we get in the game is, look, you can't solve it. So you've got to save, you've got to save life. And apparently the way to save life is to leave the planet entirely and come to one like Earth where you have a stability all the time. Like they somehow have, have this dehydrate and rehydrate workflow, but they don't, they don't expect human beings to solve the three body problem, which feels like an odd thing to me. I don't know. what it, That was my main thought about the game. Even though I think that that actress so fond is very striking. And it's like, you know, if I'm going to have my head chopped off, have at it, lovely lady. Yeah, well, like I say, if it can't be, if it can't be solved, it just feels like they're trying to get sympathy from whoever they can to. Right. And, and I think maybe being scientifically stagnant is the only answer. They seem to have done a good job so far somehow, and I wonder if this is going to come back. Why are these scientists killing themselves? And how do, how are they able to, from where they are, they were able to manipulate the sky? Yep. Are they, are they able to manipulate things? In other words, why... Again, this is really covered in the book and alluded to here, but you think people would be more freaking out about it is like all our understanding of the scientific world appears to be completely wrong and the natural world doesn't work the way we've assumed it to. That is a frightening, frightening idea. Well, just the idea that they somehow... They can control what everybody sees when they make the the stars blink, but they can also they have enough technology to control what one person sees in the countdown. Like this is, it is really whatever they want to allow, seemingly is happening. I think that's a great call there, Catfish. Listeners, what did you think? Did you have a favorite character amongst all these groups? Did you have a character who you didn't connect with through all these groups? Really, we're only halfway through, so I think some of these characters who maybe haven't, uh, you know, rocketed off your television screen yet could be coming up and doing great. Before we go on in the podcast, hey, we love our science riddles, Cap. Oh, God. All right, you ready for another one? Yeah. Science riddle number two. I'm a particle and a wave, it's true. In quantum realms, I might astound you. I'm at the heart of Heisenberg's uncertainty. What am I in this quantum journey? Uh, a cat? <laughs> I'm glad you've put a lot of thought into this because if you had uh, live live cat or a dead cat, you know. Oh, there you go. That is exactly right. Schrodinger's cat, if you yeah. will. Um, listeners, if you have a thought to these scientific riddles, you know, hey, shout them out. Reach out to us on social media. Tell us. No, I'm going to give you the answers in a bit. Now, I want to get to once again, uh, kind of what I thought was the oh holy crap moment in the book and i think once again it's done very well in the show that's the moment that's the do not answer moment which is uh, kind of almost the catchphrase at this point of the show do not answer do not answer and so we saw what happened to this character we saw how she had constantly been betrayed by human beings and so hopefully as a viewer you understand why she would you know answer a message which says do not answer or we're going to come and you know take over your planet mm -hmm. and so Listeners, this is a question for you. Hey, this is a question for us. Is there anything in your life that would cause you to answer that message? They're saying do not answer, but you're like, to hell with it. I'm siding with the Santee. Catfish, anything in your life where you're like, yeah, I would uh, I, I would answer that message. What would have to happen to make you answer that message? Uh, just uh, Trump becoming president again. Okay, well, Santee, um, if you're coming, I'll, I bow down to you. <laughs> <laughs> we we've regressed as a species right and as a as a logical thinking group of people and <laughs> just bring it it's four, 400 right. years is she too long what did she Can you, we is, cannot save ourselves Come. isn't there some kind of laser you can just shoot <laughs> friggin laser beams um end it now okay that's my answer bubba what about you 
Well, I've been trying to think like what has been the most difficult thing in my life. And let's be honest, life is filled with challenges. You know, mm -hmm, sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, maybe this is a, somebody's philosophy. A lot of times there's things you did yourself, you know, kind of kind of like if I had quit playing basketball when my foot was sore, I may not have broken my foot. If I had done this, I may not mm -hmm. have done that. But I was thinking about, OK, you, you know, you really have to hate humanity to to do the to, you know, to really, you know, turn your back on humanity and right. root for Santee to win. So I was thinking, what really has made me hate humanity more than anything? And I really, really do think that it's all the people who have supported Bon Jovi over the years. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I hated that music so much when I was a kid in the 80s, like living on a prayer, okay. all those Bon Jovi uh -huh. tunes. And yet they somehow come back around, you know, and, and they don't get popular again. And mm -hmm. literally within the last week, I found myself because it was on some stupid show or commercial kind of singing along with it. And I'm like, why am I singing along with this song? I hate this song. Oh boy. And so if, you know, like I suddenly heard I'm a cowboy dead or alive. If I found myself singing along with it, I would just say, okay, yes, we can't, we can't save ourselves. Please come and take over. I got it. Okay. So it's still, this is only really your issue because, <laughs> Wait, because it's that bothering isn't that the you. Point? You want, you want, well, I mean, my response was, it just shows that as a species, we, we just can't think logically anymore. And you're oh, just that like, also my point proved that too. <laughs> Did it all right. Not? I'm not going to belittle your answer compared to mine. I'm just going to say, I think mine's better. Oh, all right. Hey, listeners, as you can tell, we love having fun on this podcast, having fun with these shows. Is there something that humanity would do or has done or could do that would cause you to answer the do not answer message? I'd love to hear it. I honestly think I may have to put that out on social media because I bet just like with our infamous House of the Dragon match games, we might get some great answers from um, uh, the I'm listeners. very excited for that. And... That'll lead us into listener mm -hmm. feedback because this is a new show that hasn't even been out four days. We only have a little bit of feedback, but we love hearing from you guys once again at Double PHQ on Twitter, on Threads, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Search Double PHQ, find us, give us these comments. This first comment, uh, Catfish, why don't you read from Jen Cat Mom on X slash Twitter? All right, at All Mod Cons. I just saw the first episode last night. Might binge the whole season this weekend. Well, haven't read the books, but the first episode was one of the best pilots I've ever seen. It's man. Triple I. Wait, Triple I? Interesting, intriguing, and intoxicating. Whoa. Catfish, do you agree? that? Did you agree about the first episode? She's saying one of the best pilots she's ever seen. That first episode, I'll give it up. It was good. It was very good. Yeah, I, th I, th I thought it was very good, too. Uh you know they had a lot to go through and uh, again i've i've seen this show this this book described as unfilmable which i don't think is true because there's just a lot of story and you can just hit the story beats mm -hmm. um but i guess it's unfilmable if you decide to like moby dick is unfilmable if you decide I'm going to film the whole middle part of the book, which is just how to wail. So I, I don't think it's unfilmable, but I think they've done a great job and did a great job with the first episode. Well, certainly. How about this? This book came out, you know, now about 14, 15 years ago. Do you think the technology was available to really do a good version of the VR game 15 years ago? Or would you have had to, do like Toy Story version of it. You know, nothing against Toy Story. I love Toy Story, but you know, is that part of it? Because when you put on the the VR headset, you really are supposed to be there. It is supposed to be like live action, not, you know, like, I yeah. don't know. Well, I, I mean, if you're saying would the technology have been believable, I mean, the technology is still as as our boy uh, R.I.P. Uh, drummer Jack. Um, <laughs> says, like, this is like f five advancements down the line it's not next gen this is like right. six gens away so I, I mean you know when they do film the vr it's it's in they're they're filming real stuff so i i think it would have been just as okay. unbelievable than it is, is now so i i think they could have filmed it mm -hmm. 
Well, all right. Hey, this next bit of feedback we got from our good buddy Link Hogthrob, who's at Matt's Test Lab One on Twitter, and they gave the show three P's. Oh yeah, th- wait, what? Three P's? Triple P's: physics, pharmacology, and politics. Love the first episode. Hope you all do a podcast for it. Well, here we are, Catfish. Um, Link here, Matt's Test Lab One on Twitter mentions politics. Do you feel this has a lot of politics? I mean, it has real world in the cultural revolution in China, but do you think this is a a true political threat or is the threat through four episodes kind of bigger than politics? What do you think? Well, I I mean, I guess the thing is my sense was, again, reading the first hundred pages that basically the kind of the world was coming to the, the world governments were kind of coming together to try to solve this and we yes. don't have a sense of that now we just have our our, our you know it's we don't know who uh, mysterious uh, liam cunningham's <laughs> backers are right so i i mean um i guess they're talking about the you, you know the politics of the chinese cultural revolution um i did read a funny thing saying it's like well how was uh six and lu able to write about this and apparently it turns out that that part of chinese history there the present chinese government is very down on so yeah that's how he was able to uh sneak that part in well even then though e- even though you say that catfish which is true i think this is a fact most people may know but the english translation that you read the the person who did the translation ken lu he actually reached out and said hey this order that you've got it in the book doesn't make too much sense. I think some of this cultural revolution stuff should come earlier in the book. And the author said, well, yeah, do that for the translation. I couldn't do that in China. In China, I had to, you know, you really don't get to the cultural revolution stuff until, you know, like 400 pages in, where in the American version, it does begin just like this show does with the, with the you know, the cultural revolution and the uh, murder of her father. So oh, that's interesting. That's good information. That I did not know. This, that's value added, Bubba. Well, let's get to some things you do know, and that's the scientific riddles, catfish. Oh, no, no, no. You All know right. what? I didn't even. I had. A, I didn't even really look at these. So no, you I can't tell. No, I did. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So this one. This one is our third riddle, and I'll give everybody all the answers. This third riddle, uh, you can have a bit more fun with, is what I would say. So our third science riddle. Okay, not like the first two that I took. No, the first two don't have this type of fun. So you ready? Why Mm -hmm. can't you trust an atom? Why can't Uh, you trust an atom? uh, uh, Okay, because he'll never eve... Okay, that's uh, you. When I said have a bit of fun, I meant actual fun. But uh, sure. So okay, listeners, let's get to it. I'm going to answer this one first because this one is a bit silly. Why can't you trust an atom? Why not? You can't trust an atom because they make everything up. Oh. They make up everything. <sighs> All right, let's go to let's go in reverse. Give me the second one. Let me. I'll right. read the second one, and then you, you can answer. Okay. I'm a particle and a wave, it's true. In quantum realms, I might astound you. I'm at the heart of Heisenberg's uncertainty. What am I in this quantum journey? You ready? Yeah. I'm light. You like that? I mean, I think that landed with a bigger thud than my answer to the third. <laughs> <laughs> the third okay, they're not all jokes. They're not all jokes. Okay. No, but it's still a thud. Okay, are you ready for the to answer the first one? It's 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 obvious you've really absorbed these and didn't just look them up and was like, okay, that seems reasonable. I did just look them up. How okay, could you? all right, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the riddle. I hope you're ready for the answer this yeah, time. Uh, I make up three fourths of the universe, but what? But most of what I am is a mystery. What is it? Dark matter. Oh man, I said the word cloud, but that's uh, but I'm close, close. Yes, we do this because we're both scientists, <laughs> and so <laughs> <laughs> and so as you can tell, um, 
these are meant for children. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So Bubba, I guess the main thing we want to, to ask people is, is to answer this, answer these important questions. Number one, what was your best Game of Thrones cameo? Yes. Number two, who is your favorite character? And you can say even your favorite character amongst all the different, the four different groups we've identified. Uh, the first group, by the way, the Oxford Five, mysteriously, not mysteriously, brought together by Ye to further her causes. Uh, but so far, she's only picked her daughter. One up. Her daughter was their ter- teacher for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and her daughter uh, also uh, did, 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 is not going to make it to level level two of the game. <laughs> Somehow she did not protect her daughter in all this. And what would you do? What would have to happen in your life for you to see a message that says, do not contact or your planet will be obliterated. And then you're like, hello, hello, hello. Here's our, loca- our, our coordinates in the galaxy. Yes, That's what we it, need before we can do our next episode of Body, 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 covering episodes five through eight of The Three-Body Problem. Listen to me. Oh, <laughs> we're halfway there. <laughs> Destroy this planet. <laughs> Bubba, you're slowly convincing me bit by bit that you might be correct. All righty. And you'll right. hear us next time on Bodies. Bodies. Bodies!